Hello guys, it's Johnny Time and welcome to another smart contract hacking tutorial. Today we are solving the 10th challenge in Eternaut, which is re-entrancy. Now we're going to use Foundry to solve this challenge. So if you came here, you earned twice. You're gonna learn smart contract hacking, re-entrancy attacks, while learning the most common framework, the most useful framework, which is Foundry. If you missed the first video in this series, make sure to watch it. It's in the playlist, the Eternaut Foundry Solutions, because we explain how we use Foundry to solve Eternaut and we set up all our environment and repositories. So definitely check out this video. And if you are new here, make sure to subscribe to the channel and turn on the bell notification button for more amazing tutorials about smart contract hacking, security and auditing. Now, without further ado, let's get started. So this is the re entrancy challenge in Eternaut and we have one goal of this level which is to steal all the funds from the smart contract. We have some list of things that can help us such as untrusted contracts can execute code where you least expect it, fallback methods, throw, throw and revert bubbling, sometimes the best way to attack the contract is with another contract. Aham, aham, hint. And we see, we can have a, a look, we can take a look at a question mark page to see all uh, the help that we can get over there, which is not necessary because we're gonna explain everything in this video. And this is our re entry smart contract that we need to exploit and drain from ETH balance. So, first, before actually finding the vulnerability, I'm gonna deploy a new instance so we can play with it. So, I will use my MetaMask to send a transaction. And the next thing I'm going to do is to copy all the smart contract file and copy it to my local environment. So, in the SRC folder, I will create a new file so it will be re entry and I will paste all the code over here. It will be much more easier to look at it and find vulnerabilities. We can see that in the background, the contract was deployed and we already got the instance address, which we can use later to interact from our Foundry folder with this smart contract. And now let's try to understand what we have over here. So first we see that we use old version of Solidity and we use safe math. Then we have a balances mapping that maps between address to uint. There is a donate function, which is a public payable. Anyone can basically provide an address and send ETH to this function. And then simply it's just gonna add the balances to this address. So it just donate as it sounds. It's basically going to update the balances mapping based on our address and the ETH that we sent in the message value. We have another view function balance off that just returns the balance of an address based on the mapping over here. And we have a withdraw function and we have a default payable receive function that allows the smart contract to receive ETH. Let's take a look at the withdraw function. So this is a public function. Anyone can call it and pass the amount that he wishes to withdraw. The first thing it does, it checks that the balance of the sender, the one who sent the transaction, is either greater or equal to the one amount that he is requesting to withdraw. The next thing it does, it uses the low level call opcode to send this amount to the message sender. It doesn't send any data because it just wants to send ETH without triggering any transactions. Then it does something weird, if result amount, basically nothing, I don't know what these lines of code are meant to be, and after it sends the ETH, it updates the balances uh, mapping and reduces this amount from the message sender. Now, apart from we interested, which we'll get in a second, we have here another arithmetic overflow vulnerability that is not exploitable because as you can see in the donate, they use the add, fu add function instead of just the plus because we know that prior to 0 0.8, in Solidity, if we don't use safe math uh, functions, then we're vulnerable to underflows and overflows. So the add here is okay because they use safe math, but here in the balances minus equals, basically we don't use safe math, even though we imported it and we use it for uint, but we just use the normal operators of minus instead of using safe math. Now it's not a big deal because here we check that the amount is either equal or lower than our balance. So it cannot go below this balance, but still it's a bad practice and if we're already using safe math it's better to use it with um with the sub function instead of the minus so i will add here an audit issue and i will add here vulnerable vulnerable to underflow to arithmetic 
on the flow, but it's not exploitable. So I can add here, not exploitable. If it would be an audit contest, I would just report it as low or something, because you know, if you're already using old version of Solidity and SafeMath, it's better to use the SafeMath functions. Now, the real issue over here is actually the re entity attack, which we can make over here, because what happens in this withdrawal smart contract is that we first make this low level call to send the ETH to the message sender and only after we update the state and we reduce the amount from the balances message sender. Why this is problematic? Because this line of code basically moves the execution flow from this smart contract to the message sender. Now the message sender could either be an EOA account or a smart contract. If it's an EOA account, like a normal Ethereum wallet, then it wouldn't execute any functions, but just receive ETH. But if the message sender here is a smart contract, then we can run code after this line of code. Because if the message sender is a contract, he gets the execution, he receives the ETH with execution through a receive function, through a fallback function. And then we can basically run whatever code we want before this line of code was executed. And this is classic simple re-entry attacks because it allows us basically to withdraw the same ETH again. Because if here we get execution and the balances wasn't updated yet, the mapping wasn't updated, then we can call here again the withdraw function and our balance will be the same, the mapping will be the same even though we received the ETH already, right? So this is how re-entry C works. We re-enter the same function again and again and again in order to manipulate a smart contract, to steal money, to create harm, to gain value. And this is a classic example of re-entry C attack. And if you want to learn more about more advanced re-entry C attacks and more advanced smart contract security, auditing and hacking topics, you should definitely check out the complete smart contract hacking course, which comes with 30 different chapters and more than 50 hands-on exercises. One of the chapters, chapter number eight, is re-entry, which comes with four amazing advanced re-entry exercises. This is just a simple version of re-entry, but re-entry can come with so many forms. And this course is going to make sure that you can master all those forms, you know how to spot them, you know how to exploit them, and many more subjects that are advanced, such as unchecked return values, front running, down governance attacks, oracle manipulations, and much more. You also get a bonus guest lectures with the best professionals in the industry, trust the GOAT of Code Arena, and he has his own auditing firm, Pashov, the most book private solo auditor that passed $100,000 a month doing private smart contract audits to clients and Owen, an educator in the space and the founder of Guardian Audits. Now, on top of that, you also get a certificate at the end that will help you to land your first job in the Web3 security industry as an auditor, researcher or whatever profession that you want to pursue. And the most amazing thing that you also get access to this private closed Discord community with all the other students and the teachers and other professionals where you can ask questions about the course, about smart contract auditing in general, maybe network with other students, team up for auditing contests and get so much alpha in the best Discord community for Web3 security. You can get all of this using the discount link in the description below. Going back to the challenge here, I'm going to add here an audit issue comment and I'm going to write vulnerable to re-entrancy and also it basically doesn't follow the CAI pattern which stands for checks effects interactions when we write smart, smart contracts we first want to the checks which is okay they do the checks here then we want to do the effect which means changing the state variables of the smart contracts and only at the end, we want to do interactions with external addresses and contracts, which is obviously not the case over here, because here we do first interactions and then effects. We don't follow the CAI pattern. And again, this is something that we'll learn more about in depth in the smart contract hacking course. Okay, let's see how we can solve the challenge. First, I will go to the script folder and I'm just going to copy a previous script from previous exercise as a template and rename here the file, the script file instead of coin flip to re-entrancy solution.sol. We can close this and this. And here, instead of importing conflict, I'm going to import the re-entrance smart contract. 
And we don't need this player smart contract. It's from the coin flip challenge. We'll change the solution contract to re-entrancy solution. Now here, the instance will be re-entrance and we will do it over here and also over here. Let's do it lowercase r and here we need to paste the instance address. So I'll remove it and I will also remove these two lines of code. Now I do leave these lines of code because it will help me to broadcast my transactions using my private key, using my MetaMask wallet to the Gorilla blockchain. And if you want to learn more about how it works, check out the first video, how to get started with Ethernet and Foundry. Heading over to the website, copying the instance address and then pasting it here in our smart contract. And since this smart contract also have a receive function, we need to add here also payable. So let's add here payable. Beautiful. Add a small typo, so I'm going to change it over here. re enter C solution. Beautiful. And also in the file name, so we'll change it from re entre to re entrancy over here. Now, in order to solve this challenge, we need to create a new smart contract because we want to make sure that here in this low level call, we can run code. So we cannot use an EOA account and basically using this re entrancy solution contract in Foundry, which is inheriting from script, is like using EOA account because Foundry is not going to actually deploy a new contract for us. So we'll have to create another contract here and I will call it contract attack re-entrance we want to make sure it's a smart contract that can receive the callback receive the ETH, and call the withdrawal function again now i will move here the instance i don't need here in the solution script but i need it actually in the attack contract so i can interact with the re-entry smart contract so i move this line of code over here and then let's create the constructor so the constructor is going to be public and payable we will send some ETH. To this constructor because the first thing that we need to do from this attack contract is deposit or donate some ETH so our balance will be greater than zero. So we will have we need to have some initial ETH in this attacker smart contract. And the first thing that we want to do is to donate a little bit of ETH that we can take from the smart contract. Now, how much ETH we want to take from the smart contract? We want to check his balance. So in order to see how much ETH there is in a smart contract, so we need to basically drain this ETH. I'm going to click here, this Goeli transaction, and I'm going to copy here the instance address, search it over here in the search bar and see how much ETH. Okay, we can see that we have 0.001 ETH, which we need to drain from this smart contract. So this is the exact same ETH that we want to donate first. It's very simple. First, we're going to donate 0.001 ETH. We're going to donate it to ourselves, to ourselves. Then we're going to withdraw the 0.001 ETH that we donated to ourselves and then we're gonna re-enter and withdraw again the 0.001 ETH of the contract, right? Because we already saw the vulnerability, the balances mapping is being updated only after the low level call, so we will be able to re-enter again to the withdraw function and get not only our donated 0.01 ETH, but also the initial 0.01 ETH that exists here in the contract. So let's start first to donate this initial ETH, so our balances mapping will not be zero. So re-entrance instance dot donate i will add here the value the value is going to be 0.001 ETH. who do we want to donate to again let's go back to the function we need to supply here the address basically ourselves so i'll do address this we're donating to ourselves this ETH to the balances mapping of ourselves the next thing i want to do is to create a withdraw function so i'll do here function withdraw and it's this is basically a very simple function external that anyone can call it i know it's not safe we don't have access control over here and anyone can call it and drain the eth from us it's okay it's just a ctf we can just do it without access control you know but in real life we would want to add some kind of access control to our attacker contract that only we can use it and anyone else cannot use it when you send a transaction it will be rejected so what i'm gonna do i'm gonna call the withdraw function so re-entrance instance dot withdraw and we need to pass the amount that we want to withdraw and it's going to be 0.001 ether beautiful now let's try to think what's going to happen over here we can copy this comment over here so 
this is the withdraw. And now what is going to happen here? This withdraw function will send us the 0.01 ETH and basically will trigger our receive function. In this receive function, we can run whatever code we want before the mapping is being updated. So let's create here the receive function, receive. It will be external and it also needs to be payable because it needs to receive ETH, of course. And what do we want to do once we withdraw once? We want to withdraw twice, right? We want to get all the ETH, the 0.02 ETH, right? So I'm going to call this re instance instance dot withdraw again, again with 0.01 ETH so we can get twice. We double our initial investment or donation. We withdraw it twice. Now let's see what happens. So we call here withdraw again again it will send us 0.01 ETH and only then it will update the balance mapping now we know that there is only 0.01 ETH to still form the contract so we don't need to do it over and over again but if we wanted we could do it again and again if the balance of the smart contract was higher now right after this execution is finished and that the second withdrawal was finished so this is gonna run then this is gonna run and here now we want to send the ETH to the message sender, to our original player account, to the MetaMask wallet that is actually deploying this attacker contract because we want we don't want to have the ETH stuck in our attacker contract. We want to get it to our EOA account. So what I'm going to do is bool result and I'm going to use the low level call to the message sender. So message sender dot call and I'm going to send this time 0.00 to ether right because at that point we were supposed to have double of what we had in the beginning because we exploited a contract and we were able to drain this 0.01 ETH from the vulnerable contract so we made some profit we doubled our investment which is pretty cool and here I'm gonna just copy the comment here and move it over here and all we have to do is just to deploy our attack reentrance contract and call the withdraw function so let's just do it over here so attack Reentrant, we'll do attack reentrant. This will be with lowercase and it equals new attack reentrant. And we're gonna send here the value of 0.001 ether. Uh, we don't need to send any parameters to the constructor because it doesn't receive any parameters, but we do need to send the value of ETH. So what will happen is that the contract will be deployed. We will donate this ETH to the uh, reentrant contract. And then we want to call the withdraw function over here. So I will do attack reentrant dot withdraw we don't need to pass any parameters because it's our withdraw and not the reentrant withdraw function and that's supposed to be enough this malicious smart contract script in foundry supposed to exploit this reentrant smart contract and eventually we should receive and drain all the eth from this contract now it's the money time so we'll open here our terminal and do something like forge script script reentrancy solution dash dash broadcast we also need to use the tc argument which stands for target contract so foundry will know to execute this reentrancy solution contract strip instead of this attack reentrance script and this is basically the starting point and this should be okay if we click enter now we see that we have an error obviously because here we use 0.8 and this contract is 0.6 so I'm just going to copy and change the version, clear the console and try to execute the script again. Let's cross our fingers. Beautiful. The script ran successfully. We can see here the transaction was submitted to the blockchain and now we're waiting for a receipt. We're waiting for the miners to confirm it. It was pretty quick and the miners already confirmed it. So in order to see if we were able to solve it, we'll need to submit the instance and see if it actually worked. So we submitted the instance and now we're waiting and it worked, guys. As you can see, we have the button go to the next level. We got the message. Well done. You have completed this level and we made it. We solved the 10th Ethernaut CTF challenge re-entrant you learn about re and attacks and we solved it using foundry this was amazing now this is your time to pause the video smash this like button and subscribe to the channel for more amazing videos and tutorials for smart contract hacking thank you so much and i will see you in the next tutorial bye bye